your dad, like oh, so fond of him. I think about him a lot, even transferring into business, some of the lessons he taught me. And like, I wouldn't say like he's a father figure because I had a great dad, but he showed me love when I was down. He gave me my debut. He brought me back from England. Um, he kicked me out the ass a few times too. What's it like to be coached by your dad? Like I know you get this question a lot, but yeah. fuck, what's it? it must be weird. Uh, it is weird. Like at the start, it was definitely weird. Um, you know, I thought we we both thought that we were ready for it, but then when it was actually happening, it was like this shit, it's just a weird dynamic. Like, um, and then obviously that 2019 year, we started the year like two and nine. Like we were <laughs> awful, awful, and we were just getting roasted through like the media. And um, he obviously had the where he left from the Tigers that was a bit ugly. So yeah, um, yeah, that was like it was hard times. Like he'll even say like he was thinking of giving it up then just because of you know it just sort of felt like it was a failure but from that moment to now like we could have never you know imagined what imagine, the bro, success imagine, we've had. I know, yeah. bro, like it's it's like crazy and now i've got these memories for life but like now getting coached by him it, it just feels natural um you know i feel like when he's at training he just feels like the coach and outside of it he's dad but i think the coolest thing is like we obviously have great trust with one another and, um, you know, obviously I'm in a position where I'm lucky enough to be the captain so I can relay stuff to him that he probably wouldn't hear otherwise. Um, and not putting anyone in, like, bad positions, but just talking about, like, what the feel is amongst the boys and what yeah. we might need to be doing. Like, I have no problem, like, going to him and sort of saying, oh, I think we can do this better or less of this, more of this. And I think that's a cool relationship to have. Um, have you ever had a blow-up? Because uh, you're, you're both pretty, like... Yeah, I wouldn't well, say a blow-up. Like, we, sometimes we have different views and I think that's been the cool thing like I think our relationship has sort of developed as it's gone on where like yeah we can just say things that we're thinking and if we don't agree we don't agree but you know well, yeah, I've given you that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. yeah that means, oh, yeah, I don't know. I've got that plenty of times so yeah, yeah. It's a lot of the time it's worse when he doesn't say anything <laughs> yeah it's I know like, oh, shit. <laughs> but um no it's it's um it's become a cool like a cool dynamic I, reckon. I remember one time I walked out a video and Nigel Plum goes Videos are too long. So I sort of want to expand on this conversation a little bit. Like your career was just starting to take off. His was like in a little bit of a like turmoil with getting let go of Penrith. Mm. What was that dynamic like at home? Because I obviously as a father, he's like, must be, off. I'm so proud of Nath. Yeah. But then on a personal level, as someone who, who I know wants to succeed, mm. it must be like a weird little time frame, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was weird. And like, if I'm being honest, at the time I remember him coming home and saying that he'd been like sacked from Penrith and at the time I was so off Penrith. I was like, like why? Like, you know, I think that year there was a lot of injuries. Like the year before went to That was to my the, last year at yeah, Penrith, yeah, yeah. Yeah, The year before went to the um, prelim, like mm. against all odds. And then, yeah, that year just didn't pan out. And at the time, yeah, I was just like, I was sort of off it. Um, Could you have left? Oh, uh, Probably, but I never really like looked into that. Um, but yeah, you know, you just see your dad and you just want him like the best for him. Like I'd always looked up to him. He's always been a role model for me and to sort of see him down, like he didn't really understand at the time either. Um, but to his credit, he's been my number one supporter through it all. Mm. He, he even said to me, he's like, I want you to stay at Penrith and, and it was a good opportunity for me to just carve out my own path and like we look back on it now and it's was, it was almost been the best thing that happened. Because yeah, that makes sense, yeah. If he had stayed, like. Oh, he's only in because his dad's the cage. 100%. There might have right. been those conversations. Like, I don't think, him. like there's no way he would have debuted me the same time that um, Anthony Griffin did. It would have been, he even says it, like we were talking about it and we were saying, like I just signed a new contract and it's sort of, the contract was um, laid out for me to debut when I was like 21 and we were like, he was like, yeah, that's a good year for you to, to try and get in. And, and you just rock up and debut well, it, anyway. It, bro, I ended up working out. David when I was like 18. So, mm. um, yeah, I think the position was like, I don't think dad would have ever done that. So the way it all worked out, it just ended up, it ended up being, you know, perfect. And as you said, he had a year off and I think that was good for him too. And he just sort of clear his head and uh, he says, he even says it now, a lot of the things um, with his coaching philosophy have come from that year off. He just had time to sort of mm. sit down and, and look back on himself and what he wanted to be. And, um, yeah, I think it's made him a better coach. And, yeah, it's, and he's again, he's always been my number one supporter even through that period. He was he, coming to games with the hoodie on, drink, <laughs> drinking in the stands. Yeah, and he, loves that. The like, BI, he loves the BIV. Yeah, I think he sort of enjoyed that too, like just being able to be a fan and 
Mm. Um, did you try and kick him out of the main bedroom when, when you're the main breadwinner? <laughs> you say hey, I've given the bunk bed. Yeah, oh, I've given the bunk. <laughs> get in the bunk beds of Jetty, mate. <laughs> no, nah, it was, it was uh, yeah, it was crazy. And then obviously we had one year where he was coaching the Tigers, and I was at Panthers, and we we're still living together. So that week, like Mum talks about, it, she hated it. She didn't know who to go for, and uh, would be sitting at the dinner table the night before the game. <laughs> it was just like a weird setup. But just trying to food poison you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> beat him twice though. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hold that over him. West Tigers take a couple wins over you when you come back to, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And then um, yeah, obviously that that sort of like he was fully invested in that Tigers job and he was loving it. Um, so I think that's sort of saying that's sort of misunderstood too the way that all went down. Like I think even he says like he would have. Rather it handled a different way and I think he has sort of regrets over that. Um, but, you know, I think what was offered to him was this. Oh, the dream. The dream. If he had passed yeah. that up then, like, who knows, like we might have never been able to be, you know, father and son, coach and player. So, Yeah. I wonder if there's like a little 30 for 30 doco when you guys are done <laughs> like a little bit later. That would be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. It would be cool. But. Question, what do you reckon would have happened if he stayed at the Warriors? If, if he had stayed at the Warriors? Yeah. And I, don't know. I, was, I had dreams of playing for the Warriors growing up. So, do you reckon you would have developed the same? Because you would have rolled into like an Auckland system no. over here. It's a little bit different. No, if I, yeah, like with all due respect, if I didn't move to Australia, like sorry, moving to Australia was the best thing that happened to me in terms of footy. Um, over there, it's obviously a lot of union pathways, and uh, I guess the, the league pathways at the time weren't there like they were here. When I first moved over here, I was amazed at sort of what was on offer and, and the development you could have. And over there, like, I, I enjoyed playing footy, but I didn't even see myself as, like, the potential to be an NRL player. Mm. I just didn't really see the path. And then when I moved over here, it was just, like, it's just, like, all laid out. Mm. Um, what, what was the moment for you? Because I remember the first time I watched you play, you played an SG ball game. You actually got in trouble from Ivan after him. That's how I remember it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to start talking? Because I was sitting there, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, always yeah, I'm just trying to get that. picked on my own, so I'm not <laughs> jumping in on this. But what was sort of the moment you realised, like, because because it looks obvious now, but mm. it, obviously there's a lot of hard work in yeah. there. Hanging around first graders, your dad's like a coach, and I look at a lot of players who their dads are the coach. They're not Nathan Clary. Mm. Like, what was the moment for you that you're like, shit, this might be me? I don't know if it was ever a moment. Um, as I said, you know, I grew up like rugby league's just been a part of my life. It's always been a passion for me. I've always loved it. Even I was playing soccer till I was like 12, but I always loved ru watching rugby league. Like I would watch every game every weekend. Do you reckon that's why you can sh strike the ball a little bit better? I think it definitely helps. Yeah, I think it definitely helps. Um, but yeah, and then as I said, you know, in New Zealand, like I was just a massive Warriors fan, enjoyed playing. Um, but then I think when I moved over to Australia and sort of saw like what was laid out, it was like I could sort of see the path and I was like, this is this is really what I want to be. Mm. Um, where in New Zealand it probably just felt like a, a long lost dream where here it was like, all right, I can sort of make this a reality. And then you go through the grades and, um, you know, to be honest, I was just taking it one step at a time and pretty cliched, but I was just enjoying it. And I never really, I still never really thought, like I still thought it was far away. I and think then, that, that Junior Kangaroos game. Yeah. I, 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 I watched it. I was like, fuck. This, this. That, was, that was sort of the year. Um, and then... I ended up debuting that year, but the start of that year, like I started to play pretty well. And then next thing I know, I played the Junior Kangaroos game. Not long after that, I played a game of cup. It was like two games and you were Yeah, yeah. And then bro, it just honestly happened so quick. Like I could have never dreamed of that year that I would be playing first grade. Like I was just like, oh, I want to be playing consistent under 20s and maybe make Junior Kangaroos or few, few play match, cup. A few matches in that. That's <laughs> yeah, that was, like, <laughs> that's the dream, man. That's it, bro, for sure. Yeah. And that year, like I did a um, cup preseason and, um, you know, I thought at that stage I was like, oh, I think I can, I think I can crack it as an arrow player, but somewhere down the track, and then yeah, it just was a whirlwind. And we, I talked about this on another post, podcast the other day, and they asked like the difference, um, like when it, I remember we done on the post session against you, and we're like cup, and you guys were still like young as, mm. and I remember like I was a half, and you were the half on the other side, and we we're just doing an arm wrestle, like a twenty minute yeah, yeah. sort of thing, and like I just remember the ball just going ting, ting, and we're like <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Me forward, fuck you. I was getting I was getting rattled in the post session because I was just getting out played, bro. Getting out kicked, so nah. it was cool. 